Long live your turtle here, and in this video I want to show you my turtle tank setup for my Red Ear Slider Herald. Alright, so this is my 75 gallon turtle tank setup. The star of the show is right here. It's Miss Harold. She's a female red eared slider and she lives here with quite a few fish. We got some Buenos Aires tetras, we got some pearl danias, and we have some convict cichlids. If you like this video and you want to see more DIY projects like this one, hit that subscribe button and check out the rest of my channel to see what other videos and DIY projects are going on there. But for this video, I want to go over everything. I haven't done a full video for a while on the overall setup for this tank, especially with new DIY projects installed here. So let's go from the bottom to the top and let's talk about the setup I have for my Red Ears Liar, Harold. So first, let's talk about the main inhabitant of our tank. That's Harold, sorry fish. Harold is a red-eared slider. Red Ear Sliders are aquatic turtles. In very general terms, aquatic turtles spend a majority of their time in the water they only really come out of the water to bask or lay eggs. So red-eared sliders can kind of be described as pond turtles. They can be found in places like ponds, lakes, rivers. They can grow quite large. Harold here as a red-eared slider can grow up to 12 inches. Right now she's seven and a half inches. But just like ponds, lakes, and rivers, they can get quite deep. That means red-eared sliders like Harold here are strong swimmers. So I give Harold the most water possible in this tank by filling this tank all the way to the top, giving Harold all the space to swim since that's where she spends most of her time, in the water. She'll, of course, you'll see the basking area over there and we'll talk about that in a bit, but she'll climb out to bask over there, but she spends most of her time in the water, so I wanna give her the most space possible where she spends most of her time. All right, so let's first talk about the tank itself here. It's the 75 gallon Aquion Standard Aquarium. Where did I get it? I got it at Petco for a dollar per gallon deal. If you've ever owned fish or you're always a deal hunter, that dollar per gallon sale is incredible. However, it can be really hard to find a store that stocks 75 gallon tanks for that deal. So if you ever see that deal for a 75 gallon tank and you're ever thinking about getting a 75 gallon tank, do it. Because otherwise they're about $150 to $250 for a 75 gallon tank. I got mine for $75, which is awesome. Let's move it down a little bit. So I have the 75 gallon aquarium sitting on top of this standard wooden frame here. This is built for the standard 75 gallon size. I bought it used on Craigslist and then painted it. Uh, probably in the end, it cost me just as much to do all that work as to just buy this brand new. But the blood, sweat and tears of making this my own is priceless. Anyway, all right, so you'll notice that turtles are larger than your average fish, especially when it comes to the aquarium hobby. Just looking at Harold here compared to a very typical sized Buenos Aires Tetra. Turtles are humongous, and you know what that means? Humongous poops. And you know what takes care of humongous poops? Excellent filtration. When it comes to designing a tank for your turtle, an extremely important component is your filtration. It'll save you so much time, effort, and frustration if you just go way big. Otherwise, you're gonna be kicking yourself later on when you're trying to upgrade filters, trying to figure out which one works by getting this precise size. No, just go big or go home or get poopy. All right, so under the hood, for my filtration, I have two canister filters. Let's take a closer look. All right, so here are my canister filters. On the left here, we have a Penplax Cascade 1200. On the right, we have a Polar Aurora 304B. So in my opinion, canister filters for a turtle aquarium are a must. They are the best choice of filtration for a turtle tank. Internal filters take a ton of space in your tank. And hanging off the back filters simply cannot provide enough filtration power for a turtle tank. All right, so you can see with the Penplax, it has a series of trays. Now this is very typical for a canister filter, is you basically have your water come down, it goes to the bottom of the filter, and then comes up through a series of trays with filter media in it. This filter media is basically the powerhouse of your filter, and it includes sponges, ceramic rings, or other types of filtration that basically clean your water, and they allow it to cycle. Definitely look up what a nitrogen cycle is. If you've never heard of it, it's very important for fish tanks. I'm not gonna focus on it here. So I'm trying to keep this video to reasonable length. All right, so the Cascade is what I would consider just above a budget filter for its general price tag. And with those 
budget filters, you don't get the best media, that filter media that we were talking about previously. You get kind of the cheaper stuff, which is gonna be just sponges. And while sponges can do the trick, you can get better media that's gonna better clean your water for longer. And so for me, I took out half the media, half the sponges that they gave me with this filter and instead put ceramic rings in. Ceramic rings are excellent biological filtration. Like I said, look up where the nitrogen cycle is and you'll better understand why biological filtration is so important. Basically, I tried to pack as much of that in there as I could, keeping some of the sponges for mechanical filtration. Now this pumps out 315 gallons per hour, which is a great flow rate. However, just that filter is not gonna cut it for my six to eight times turnover of tank water and things get dirty if I just use that filter pretty quickly. So over here to supplement the lack of filtration, I got the Polar Aurora 304B. Now this is definitely a budget filter, very cheap for what you get. Uh, of course, there are some caveats to getting cheap things. It's a generic filter, goes by a couple different names. One Sun Sun that I can remember off the top of my head. As you can see, is bigger than the Cascade, so it holds more filter media. It has that same basket setup. Water goes to the bottom, goes through to the top. And so I did the same modification I did for the Cascade for this filter. I basically took out most of the sponges that it comes with as, you know, budget filtration. I put in sintered glass, which is an extremely good biological filtration, and ceramic rings. And to be honest, those two additions were the same price as the filter itself. So it can get a little pricey when you wanna start adding really efficient and really good biological filtration. However, this filter does 525 gallons per hour. That brings us to a grand total with both these filters running at theoretical pushing power of 840 gallons per hour. And that's putting us at 11 times turnover rate for our tank here, and it keeps things real squeaky clean. I absolutely suggest this kind of setup to keep your water clear. I do water changes every two weeks, of course, to get rid of any buildup of nitrates, but I do filter cleanings like every two to three months, and that's just because we have so much filtration going on here, and they're so efficient that they break down waste really well to the point where I don't need to be cleaning these filters all the time, because one really big downside to canister filters is cleaning them. So getting it to a point where you don't need to clean them constantly is the goal for your filtration needs for a turtle tank. And you'll thank yourself later when it comes to doing general maintenance for your turtle friend. All right, so front and center is RepTiSafe. This is a water conditioner and I have really chlorinated water, so I need some sort of conditioner to remove that chlorine when I put it into the tank. There is some debate on whether this is safe for turtles, but I simply have not been convinced that it's going to kill my turtle or cause any serious harm because I've been using it for over 10 years and have not seen or heard of any evidence of this actually hurting turtles or other reptiles. So, I'm gonna continue using it because the alternatives to not using this are simply unrealistic when it comes to having large amounts of water for a turtle tank. Now, to test my water, I used test strips. So this is a six-in-one aquarium test strip, kind of a generic brand I got on Amazon. There's tons of different brands, but you basically just take a strip and dip it in your water, and then you're gonna compare it to a little chart on the side here, and it says basically where everything is in the safe range. So this is a super easy way to check your water parameters and make sure they are safe for your turtle and fish inhabitants. So there are more advanced test kits that you can get more accurate information about your water with. However, they're a little bit more involved and I'm simply lazy. And this does great to give me just what I need when it comes to my water parameters and whether I need to either change the water, change the filters, or adjust anything. So having a test kit like this one is absolutely necessary when caring for an animal in the aquarium type hobby. All right, so this little bug thing here is an air pump, and I have it on a towel here because it buzzes around and vibrates a lot when creating that air and pushing it through that tube, and it makes a lot of noise. So I have a little damper there to kill that noise. Always have a check valve, which is this little thing here. That way, if you lose power, this tube won't start to siphon water out of your tank through this little bugger here. That would be absolutely awful, and it's so cheap and easy to avoid by just doing a check valve. All right, so over here is the Zilla Power Center. And I would say this is a necessity when it comes to caring for turtles because it is a timed outlet and a regular outlet and allows you to put all your power components into this one outlet and have everything controlled right here. 
So on the right here, you have four regular outlets for things that you're gonna leave on all the time, like your filters, like your air pump, and a heater if you have one. And over here on the left, you have your timed outlets that are gonna be your lights that are gonna come on like the sun is rising or setting. So up here you have several buttons and then a digital output. And this lets you just really easily time your timed outlets so that they can come on when you want them to come on and turn off when you want them to turn off. And you can even do individual days of the week, which is a little bit much because that's just not how the sun works. But just having a timed outlet is extremely convenient and once you have one, you'll never not want one when it comes to having to turn on and off lights constantly for your turtle. Now here we have some food. We're gonna go over that at the end of the video. All right, so I wanna talk about this quickly because it's necessary, but I don't have it installed in my tank right now. It's a submersible aquarium heater. It's the middle of summer and I simply do not need it because it's plenty hot in my living space and I do not need to heat my water. But in the winter, I definitely need to heat my water to keep it at my turtle's comfortable level, which is mid 70s to high 70s to even low 80s. I'm not gonna brewmate my turtle, which is kind of like turtle hibernation. That can be complicated and a little bit dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. I'm gonna stick to the easy thing and that's going to be just heating my water and my turtle not having to worry about going to that hibernation type sleep. But above just the necessity of a heater, you need to know that turtles are extremely rough in their tanks. So you need to get a really tough heater. So I got this Vivo Sun because it's basically turtle proof. It's a titanium heater. It's really, really tough, shatterproof, and it has a little temperature controller uh, on the outside of the heater itself, which makes this really convenient and easy to use. Love this heater. Uh, 300 watts for a 75 gallon aquarium. Now, other than that, really boring thing, scrub brush for any kind of algae or gunk that built up on the glass. Turtle massage. All right, let's move to the sick part, the tank. All right, let's see what we got going on in the tank here. Harold's being a little shy today. So first thing I wanna talk about is the substrate I use and prefer for turtle tanks is sand. Sand looks super natural. It is kind of self-cleaning. Harold will move around in here, push it up, and any kind of poop and stuff that's just kind of sitting in there or digging itself in will get pushed up and then the filter can do its job, suck it up and clean out that water for us. Now this is specifically pool filter sand. And what I love about pool filter sand is it comes really clean in the bag that you get it in. With other types of sand, like play sand, you're gonna have to rinse it out like a million times, it feels like. It takes a long time. You're gonna want access to a hose and the outdoors to actually clean it out. But I live in an apartment and I don't really have access to good methods of rinsing. I have my bathtub or the saddest thing of all, a sink. So that can be really hard when you're dealing with sand that will cover a 75 gallon aquarium like this. Pool filter sand is excellent because you only have to rinse it out a couple times and then you're done. You can put it in the tank. It's like I said, a little coarser and just make sure when you get that pool filter sand, it doesn't have any sort of additives in it uh, that you could find that will be toxic to your turtle or anyone in this tank with your turtle. Definitely stick to 100% silicate sand. Otherwise you're gonna be in trouble. And the last thing I love about sand is with all that foraging, Harold is getting quite a bit of enrichment of just kind of adventuring around and digging through the sand as opposed to a bare bottom where your turtle has nothing to really do except for see its own poop until that's sucked up by the filter. Or you got river rocks, which are kind of hard to move and kind of scary to hear your turtle just smashing rocks around a glass tank. So that's why I love sand. So for decorations in general, I keep it pretty sparse in a turtle tank because I wanna give as much space for Harold to swim around as possible. But I wanna give a couple things for her to kind of be interested in and swim around and check out once in a while. So over on the left here, I have a couple pieces of driftwood. Driftwood is an excellent decoration for a turtle tank because turtles are very destructive. And if you've ever tried to decorate a turtle tank, like a fish tank, everything is gonna be moved within the hour and all that hard work that you put into a perfect scape is just gonna be completely destroyed by your turtle. Uh, they won't feel bad about it. You will be mad about it. So try to get decorations that when moved still look great and driftwood looks great. This is actually Harold's creation because I definitely had it differently just this morning uh, when I was cleaning out the tank for this video. So try to get bigger pieces of driftwood without little twigs and stuff that your turtle will break off and potentially eat. Uh, try to get big solid pieces. And of course, when you're preparing your driftwood, make sure you follow the directions. For the most part, you don't just put driftwood that you bought straight into a tank. You usually have to prepare it a little bit with some boiling water. 
Over here on the right is a DIY project of mine. I posted a video on how I made this, but it's a turtle proof decoration. It's basically a couple different typical aquarium decorations anchored down so that my turtle cannot budge these. Uh, they're basically on a tile with a bunch of pebbles siliconed in to all of these decorations right here. Check out that video if you want to see exactly how I made that. But this is basically a permanent decoration because if it was just normally placed in there, this face would be over there, this face would be over there, and this face would be over there. Now on the back wall, you can see that's not the most traditional looking background, and that's because it's another DIY project that we did on this channel. And what it is, is basically a 3D inside the tank background. So it's quite thin. Let's take a look at that real quick. You can see maybe takes up a quarter inch, three eighths inch. So it's not wasting a ton of space in the tank, but I was so sick of those rolled up tank backgrounds that you kind of try to stick on the back of your tank. And they're kind of these random scenes where you're like, could we have been a little more creative here? Companies, maybe. So I just want to make my own thing and it came out really well. It's basically glass black splash for kitchens with some PVC trim on an acrylic sheet, all silicone together. Check out the DIY video if you wanna see how to make something like this, but I think it looks really cool and original for an eternal tank like this. You can see I have some green plants here. Uh, these are fake plants. Red ear sliders are known for destroying and eating whatever is edible and even trying to eat things that aren't edible. These are pretty strong plants that I have here and they've survived very well against the turtle mouth onslaught. But I just kind of have them to kind of just float around the tank and give something for Harold to just play with if he wants to and adventure around. But yeah, I totally avoid live plants because they're extremely expensive and quick treats for Harold there. Kind of weird because it's in the middle of my water column right now, but that's my air stone making all those bubbles hooked up to that bug-like air pump underneath our tank. And that just helps air the water. And I like the look of bubbles. Um, typically I kind of want it in this little decoration here, but that's okay. All right, so you see a bunch of these little things swimming around and they are the turtle tank roommates. We have 12 Buenos Aires Tetras, eight Pearl Danios, and three convict cichlids. We got a female convict cichlid in the back there. She's quite a bit bigger. And then we got two babies somewhere else. And these are fantastic turtle roommates. Most turtles, like Harold here, are omnivorous. So they will try to eat any fish that they think they can eat. So it's extremely important that you have a fish that knows to avoid a turtle. They can avoid a turtle by being agile enough, quick enough. And they just understand that a turtle will try to eat them and they keep their distance. So the fish I have in here right now, they've been in for several weeks. The convicts have been in for months and none of them have been eaten. So I would say these are A plus fish to attempt to house with your turtle. However, never assume your turtle will not eat these fish. Never get an expensive fish. Never get a fish that you're going to be attached to because one day your turtle may catch them and eat them without remorse and without apology. But if you are interested in what kind of fish can live in your turtle tank, I have a little series that goes through six different types of fish and give a couple more great options. Uh, check those out in my channel if you wanna see what goes on with those types of fish and what types of fish they are. Those are fun little videos. But I love the fish in here right now. They school together really well and I can have a lot of them because they're relatively small. So they really fill in the empty space that is this turtle tank. That's the tank. I would have the heater in here like we talked about earlier, uh, somewhere in the back or on the side of the glass. But that is the inside of the tank. Again, I like to try to keep it relatively open and simple for Harold to easily be able to just swim around and take full advantage of the space that this tank can give. Moving on up. All right, so the top of the tank has several things going on. Let's start on the right here. On the left, we have our basking area, but on the right, we have open tank and turtles are very, very skilled escape artists, especially certain turtles like Harold, very, very adamant about escaping if ever given the option. But what we have here is a DIY glass top. And I made a video on how I made this super easy, relatively cheap when it comes to comparing it to buying what you'd have to buy for a 75 gallon aquarium, which is two of these panels for like $50. Instead, I made this for like $30 and you get that pat yourself on the back DIY. We did it sort of satisfaction when you make something like this, but basically it's a top that just covers the open side of your tank so your turtle can't escape, but it has easy access for you to feed your turtle grab your turtle because I made an extra large lid here. My whole arm can easily fit in and get around that tank. 
Here we have a cheap LED strip light that fits 10 gallon tanks. And it's perfect because it fits on this top half of the tank um, because that's all I need it for. But it's much cheaper than what you'd find in Petco or PetSmart. So definitely check out online first for something like this. But it definitely penetrates plenty into the water here. I don't have any plants or anything that I need to worry about. So it's the perfect light for the job. And then with our custom cover here, I was able to kind of design around how I wanted my filtration. So on the right here, we have that Polar Aurora filtration. It has a spray bar, but that spray bar has to be installed on the side. So I have everything all the way on the right side of my tank here. Spray bar is there, intakes right underneath it. In the center of the tank, I have my cascade intake and output. And again, that uses a spray bar, as you can kind of see in there, that basically travels that length of your tank. That way, your water is being pushed out over this portion of the tank, and then eventually it'll come back around on the bottom. That's the goal, at least. And it seems to be working because this tank stays really clean for quite a long time. Now, I'm sure you've seen it. Definitely stands out. This is an above tank basking platform. This is another DIY project that we worked on on this channel and it came out really well. It has a Grecian theme, kind of matches our Grecian themed turtle proof decoration there. But the most important function of this turtle basker is it sits on top of my tank and it easily accommodates a larger turtle like Harold. It lets me fill the tank up all the way. It has a really easy to climb ramp here made of these little tiles has this nice large basking area for Harold right in front of Poseidon where she can give her blessings or try to bite him. I don't know what she wants to do with him, but he's still there, so that's a good sign. But this is a fun DIY project. It's got these acrylic panels in the front and side so you can see Harold from afar basking away, whether she likes it or not. She still gets up there. She just doesn't like it when you get close. For this DIY project, I basically use no power tools so that pretty much anyone could make this as long as they have a basic saw and some really basic tools that pretty much everyone has. So check out that video if you want to make something like this. It could at least give you ideas of something to make like it. I've actually sold versions of this type of basking platform and I plan to sell more in the future. So if you want to just buy one from me, definitely stay tuned for my release date on the Turtle Basker 2000 coming hopefully by the end of this month or depending on when you watch this video, it's available now and you can scoop that right up and you don't have to make anything yourself. You'll just have a great turtle basker for your turtle. Now we've been talking about this for a couple minutes now. Why do I even have it for a turtle? Well, turtles are cold blooded and they require external heat sources to regulate their body temperature and certain UV rays for a successful metabolism. So what we have here is a mini deep dome. It's got a heat bulb in it and it has a UVB bulb in it. Definitely look into why those are necessary for your turtle. Again, I'm trying to keep this brief. Just know that you need a heat bulb and UVB bulb for your basking area for your turtle set at certain heights that will be adequate for your turtle. And they're easily held up by this lamp stand and that's integrated into our basking lamp here. But the biggest thing and most important thing when it comes to a basking area and a pond aquatic turtle like Harold here is maximize your tank space, which means you want that basking area on top of your tank, not take up any space in your tank. That way your turtle has all that water swimming around in and can climb on top of your tank when they need to bask, which they need to do. Do not forget that. So the last thing I want to talk about is feeding my pet turtle. Now, like I said before, red eared sliders like Harold here are omnivorous and most aquatic turtles are omnivorous. And what that means is they eat plants and animals. So your food should include both plants and animals. Now, everyone wants to feed their turtle like they're either a king or a queen. They want that exact perfect fresh vegetable and protein in their diet. That'll be the most perfect healthy diet that a turtle could possibly eat. However, it's really important to keep a realistic perspective when it comes to feeding your turtle. First of all, there's tons of debate on what a turtle exactly needs. So trying to pinpoint exactly what fresh proteins and vegetables can be really difficult. Second, and when it comes to that realism, it's hard for humans to feed themselves correctly, let alone their own pets. So keep that in mind when you are deciding on how you wanna feed your turtle. If you can keep a perfect diet, that's awesome for you. But I'd say it's almost likely that if you're going in with this really strong arm, perfect diet approach, that you're gonna slip eventually. It's probably not even gonna be your fault. It could be life problems, it could be anything. And you, those fresh vegetables, those fresh proteins are gonna become a little less fresh, maybe not the correct ones, maybe not the right schedule, and you're gonna kinda lose that. 
So to simplify everything, so just like if you have a fish, a dog, or a cat, they have what's called turtle pellet food. And this is specifically engineered to give your turtle everything they need. They have hatchling formulas. Hatchling turtles are usually more protein-based. And then they have adult formulas like this one here, like Harold is now, for a, a more vegetable-based diet with a little bit less of it being protein. So these pellets are a staple diet for my turtle. Staple diet means this is the main thing that I feed them to give them everything they need nutrient-wise. So I like to go with a more high quality brand. Omega One is one of those brands. They have really high quality ingredients in their turtle food. You can get something that's a little bit less expensive. It's still gonna give you what your turtle needs. It's just not gonna be that highest quality food. Just like how dog food works or cat food, the more you pay, usually the better quality the food is. And I like to feed my turtle every day. There's advice to do every couple days, even every third day. But feeding is definitely an enrichment for your turtle. So I like to feed my turtle every day, just a little bit less than what you'd give if you were gonna do every other day or every third day. Uh, just to give that enrichment, that feeding time for your turtle. Turtles like sliders absolutely love to eat. They're opportunistic eaters. So once food is in that tank, they're going to gobble that right up. So I said I use these turtle sticks as a staple diet, but it's important to vary up your turtle's diet as well giving them a more broad food option. And no, it doesn't need to be every single day, but you should try to every couple times a week to give them something a little different than that staple food pellet diet. So for vegetables, you can do your collard greens, your mustard greens, your lettuce like romaine lettuce. Uh, that's great to just throw a leaf in there. And she'll chomp on that for quite a while. You can even give some fruits like blueberries, bananas, strawberries, all sparingly, of course. Definitely research what foods are best for turtles. I'm not gonna go over all of those here because again, I'm trying to keep this on the clock, which I've definitely run over anyone's attention span at this point. I'm sorry for that. Uh, when it comes to different types of proteins, you can do something like freeze-dried mealworms. You could do live mealworms. Uh, and the best of all, the best enrichment is feeder fish. Now I would avoid goldfish or rosy red minnows at the store. There's tons of reasons why those aren't great feeder fish. Uh, so just avoid those. And I'll probably go over why those are actually bad in the future video. But some great feeder fish are endlers, their fancy guppies, you got your platies, your mollies, sword tails. Those are great feeder fish. And what's also great about those fish is they breed really easily. So you could actually set up like a 10 gallon tank and those fish will breed on their own. And you can scoop up fish every once in a while, throw them in the tank. You have an endless supply of feeder fish for your turtle. Of course, you can also buy these fish from the store. Just remember, these are coming from heavy bulk supply fish and can carry bacteria and other sort of diseases that you could be introducing to your turtle if you're constantly buying from a store. But again, that's a whole nother subject and I'm not gonna focus on this video. Just know that you wanna vary your diet. And actually, since I have fish in here, I actually feed them freshwater flake food and I have some convicts in there, so I'll have cichlid food usually that I'll sprinkle in there as well. Turtle will gobble that up. That's more variation for them. But I like to stick to the staple pellet diet for your turtle to ensure that they're getting all the nutrients they need because that's been specifically engineered by companies to meet your turtle's needs. But I just wanted to go over, it's fine to use pellet food. There's a lot of advice out there to only do fresh vegetables and proteins. And I just don't think that's realistic for most people's lives. Uh, they don't even do that for themselves. So. Just know that pellet food is gonna do what you need it to do. Just try to get those higher quality brands and your turtle will gobble that right up and do just fine. And that was my turtle tank set up in a turtle shell. I tried to keep it brief, but hinted on very important components that you need for a turtle tank, like for a red eared slider here. But there's so much more to know about caring for these magnificent creatures. Now I mentioned them in this video, but I got all sorts of DIY projects on this channel. I got some other fun videos and informational videos about turtles. I have two other turtles in a different enclosure that's totally different from this one that I'll go over in the future. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section. Thanks for watching and long live your turtle.